Welcome to Spirit Lutheran. Happy Father's Day. Thanks to all who make worship possible. Thanks for your prayers, gifts, and offerings. Thank you for continuing to be the church by reaching out and loving one another. We will not be worshiping at Phoenix Park just yet. Next week, we will be celebrating communion online. So have your bread and wine or juice ready. We are talking about a parking lot worship on July 12th. If you are able to help, let us know. Please go to our website or Facebook page to find out all the many things going on at Spirit. The weekly newsletter will also be available there too. Enjoy worship. I've been Karin and you've been a great crowd. same world we left and it may never be again 
but you are the God of restoration. You, O oh God, make a way in the wilderness, a river in the desert. Where we have turned away, Lord, we come back and pray for healing for our land, for our people. We pray that you refresh our faith, our relationships, our communities, our purpose. We gather our courage, our hands will be strong, our voices will be loud, and we will carry the good news of your beautiful hope. As we step out, you are with us. Our work has just begun. Dear friends in Christ, hear the good news from Matthew 10. Jesus says, Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's foes will be members of one's own household. The good news. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, open up our hearts and our minds by your Holy Spirit so that we can hear the truth and then speak the truth and most importantly, live the truth so that others can see you by our example. Amen. Father's Day, a day to say thank you to those who have led the way, to those who have passed on the faith, to those who have held us in their arms or taken us by the hand or pushed us out of our nests. We say thank you to those who have spoken the truth, as hard as it might have been. But we also realize on this day that we have been not perfect. And we ask for forgiveness. Many of you have memories, not so good memories, of fathers of other adults who have said and done things that have caused struggles for you your entire lives. But this day, we realize who we are, and we realize that God gives us another opportunity to hear that high calling of being a parent, of being an example, and living and speaking the truth it's not always easy, you know. It's not always easy to tell the truth. I remember going skiing. I had just turned 13. And my dad pulled up to the ticket counter and he said, we need one junior and one child. And I said, Dad, Dad, I just turned 13. And he said, we need two juniors. My dad, who liked to save money, who didn't like to spend money, the truth was more important for him. And that incident carried with me all through my being a parent to four girls. And when we had opportunities to save some money and get into an event for a few dollars less, it was more important that I told the truth of who they were and how old they were. But that doesn't always happen. Have you ever been asked by your spouse or a good friend, have I gained weight? I'll let you answer that one. But today in our lesson, we hear that the truth will always be known by God. He can see it in our hearts. The lesson beforehand says nothing is covered that will not be uncovered and nothing secret that will not become known. 
Nothing you do in this life can ever be hid or covered up because Jesus knows. He knows our thoughts. He knows our deep hidden secrets. He sees us for who we are. So we can't get away with anything. We might as well speak the truth. And when we speak the truth, we find that we lose friends. Our relationships suffer. When we speak the truth, sometimes people hate us. And we might even find ourselves one day a martyr for the faith, as many of the disciples found themselves. When you speak the truth, people don't like to hear the truth. Even as a child, my dad, who did not sugarcoat anything, who was rough around the edges, would tell us what we needed to hear. At that time, we didn't think so. And even for me, with daughters, it's even harder because I try, I rehearse, I try to speak gentle words of truth, but they seem to come out wrong and hurtful. And that's not easy. Speaking the truth is one of the hardest things we could ever do in life. And standing up for what we believe is even harder. For those of you who believe in the radical love of Jesus and what that means for how we live our lives and who we stand up for, that's going to be difficult. When Jesus calls his disciples, he says, come and die. How many of us really want to follow that? As Caroline Lewis says, believing in Jesus, really believing in Jesus and what he says and standing up for that and admitting it is risky business. Relationships will change. Relationships could very well end. That is in part what Jesus is saying. When you stand up for what you believe, nothing will ever be the same again. Hmm. When we think of people of color in our nation, in our world around today, when they have to decide whether or not they name once again their fear of a country in which racism continues to be validated. As white people, we have to decide if we will finally not just tell the truth about our privilege, but atone for it. If we can stop assuming that saying sorry is enough. The church has to decide whether or not it will actually tell the truth of the gospel, the gospel that brings true peace to those who suffer, to those in need of healing, to those marginalized, to those demonized, to those oppressed. God's true peace, realized and known in gladness and joy, fulfillment and contentness, happiness and blessedness. Or... Will the church, out of a fear of rocking the boat, out of a fear of death, maintain mediocrity, perpetuate its own privilege, and stay silent? When pushed toward God's peace, I am not sure that the church really believes in an empty tomb, the reality of the resurrection and the kingdom of heaven can happen here and now. For too long we have played it safe, passing over this verse of Jesus as if it really wasn't there. One of my first Sundays here at Spirit three years ago, I read this quote from Al Rognes, former president of the seminary and Lutheran theologian. Al says, you and I are built for storms. We are not built for cozy, safe little harbors. 
the Lord is with us. With him, we have the kind of craft that can weather any storm. In fact, we should head out for the storms. One of the great perils that faces the church in this day is that we will steer people out of storm centers. We are not to anchor our lives in some sheltered cove and let the storm-tossed world go by. The Lord's call is not like that. Not to an easier task, but to a greater cause. Not to peace, but to battle. Not to a cozy harbor, but to the sea of storms. We are not built for safe harbors. We are built for storms. And storms we have all throughout the world, through our nation, and even within our families on a day like this, Father's Day. But the rest of the good news of this gospel in Matthew 10 says this, So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up and nothing is secret. And then it goes on to say, do not fear those who can kill the body but cannot kill the soul. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows, even the hairs of your head are numbered. Yes, friends, we have the greatest father ever, our Father in heaven, who also takes on the greatest traits of a mother. As we know, God is neither male nor female, but God is the perfect parent, the one that loves us, the one that forgives us, and the one that makes all things new. Amen. Let us pray. Father, thank you for being always with us, for taking away our fear and building up our faith. Thank you for allowing us to be parents, to be mothers and fathers, to be those that can lead and guide by example. Help us to always tell the truth so that others can know the truth, even though it might hurt, even though we might lose friends, even though our families might not understand us. Help us to follow you. And gracious God, be with those who are struggling, especially through this pandemic, those who have lost loved ones, those who struggle with sickness and death, be especially with Ruth Sather and her family upon the death of Bob this last week. Be with others that we now name in our hearts. And gracious God, help us to hear the truth, the truth of the gospel, and to live it always as we seek to love one another each and every day of our lives. We pray this in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the peace of Jesus the peace that is different from the peace of the world come upon you and be within you as the Father 
Son, and Holy Spirit bless you from this time forth until we meet again. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.